All right, we start by defining what an inscribed angle is. And an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on a circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. An arc that lies between two lines, rays, or segments is called an intercepted arc. So in the diagram, angle RQP would be an inscribed angle. The intercepted arc would be um, arc RP. And I remember um, angle ROP, that would be a central angle because the vertex O is at the center of the circle. Now a polygon is called an inscribed polygon when all its vertices lie on the circle. Okay, so this first theorem is called the measure of an inscribed angle theorem, and it simply says that the measure of an inscribed angle is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. So if I have a circle, and we'll call this circle C, okay, and I have an inscribed angle here, so that means again that, that the vertex is on the, the edge of the circle. So we call this A, D, and B. The measure of the inscribed angle. So on this picture, my inscribed angle is angle ADB. So it's going to be one half the measure of the intercepted arc. So the kind of the endpoints of this angle, you want to think of it that way. This is the arc that's in between them. Okay, so that's the what we call the intercepted arc. And so the measure of angle ADB is half the arc AB. All right, on this example, uh, it says find the indicated measure. The first uh, problem says it wants us to find the measure of angle T. Okay. Angle T is going to be right here. So if I look at this angle and I follow it down, the arc part of it is from R to S. So the measure of angle T is equal to one half of forty-eight, because that's the intercepted arc, and half of forty-eight is twenty-four. So the measure of angle T is twenty-four degrees. Now the second problem, this this question B, says it wants us to find the measure of arc QR, okay, which is up here. So we're gonna have to do a few things. We know this is forty-eight. We know that this angle here is 50. Okay, This angle is an inscribed angle, so it's half the measure of this arc here. So we're kind of going backwards on this one. So this or this is half of whatever's over here. So if I want to go backwards, I need to multiply by 2. So that tells me that this arc QT here is 100. Okay. Now, we also can do the fact that this right here is a diameter. So that's 180. So from here to here, because it's a diameter, I know the arc measures 180 degrees. It's a semicircle. So I have 100 and 180. I know if I go all the way around, it's going to be 360. So if I add these two, it's going to be 100 plus 180, which is 280. Then I have to do 360 minus 280 to get this arc right here from Q to R. Okay, so 360 minus 280 is going to be 80. Okay, so the measure of angle or arc QR is 80 degrees. Alright, this example uh, wants us to find the measure of the intercepted arc. It says find the measure of arc RS and the measure of angle arc STR. And then what, what do you notice about angle STR and angle RUS? All right, so let's look at the circle here. Arc RS is here. Okay, so what I want to do since I'm going backwards, I know that this is half of this arc here. So I'm going backwards, that means I need to take 31 and multiply by 2 to get uh, 62 degrees for the measure of arc RS. So this is 62 degrees. Again, because the 62 or the 31 is half the 62, and then it wants us to find the measure of angle STR. So STR is here. This is the angle I want. All right. Um, this arc here is 62. 
So that means the measure of angle STR is equal to half the measure of the intercepted arc, which in this case, if I go this way, S and R are kind of my endpoints. So the arc RX. Well, I know that RS is actually 62 degrees. So that means this is equal to one half of 62, which is going to be 31. Okay. So I have 62 here and 31 here. And it says, what do you notice about angle STR and angle RUS? Well, we got that this one was 31 degrees. So they're equal. Uh, the measure, I would say angle STR is congruent to angle RUS. Okay. All right, next we got uh, what's called the inscribed angles of a circle theorem. And it's basically kind of looking at what the example we just looked at, but in general terms, uh, the conclusion that we can make is that if we have two inscribed angles of a circle intersecting the same arc, that means that the angles have to be congruent. Okay, so if we want to look at it, we draw an angle here. And we'll call this A, we'll have D here, and we'll call this B. Okay, so I have this angle here. The arc is this arc AB. So if I make another, inter another inscribed angle using A and B as my points, so if I kind of come down here this way, and I connect B right here to this point, we'll call that C. Okay, that means because this arc AB is the intercepted arc of this angle D up here, and it's the intercepted arc of this angle C, that means that this angle C has to be congruent to angle D. So let's kind of write that out. Um, if arc AB is the intercepted arc of angle ADB and angle ACB, then the measure of angle ADB is equal to the measure of angle ACB. Okay, so now we have this example that says find the measure of an angle. Given the measure of angle E75, find the measure of angle F. Right, so if I look at angle E, it's an inscribed angle here. So the arc that it that's intercepted is GH. And if I look at angle F, I notice that it has the same intercepted arc. So that means, since they share that arc right here, that means that measure of, the measure of angle F has to equal the measure of angle E, which is 75 degrees. Okay. A polygon is an inscribed polygon when all its vertices lie on a circle. The circle that contains the vertices is a circumscribed circle, as you can see in the diagram. Alright, uh, next we have what's called the inscribed right triangle theorem. And that just simply says that a right triangle is inscribed in a circle if and only if the hypotenuse is the diameter. So if I have a circle, and then I have a triangle that comes through here. All right, two things are going to happen. Either you're told that the triangle is right triangle, which means that you'll have this 90 degree angle here. And then put some letters here. Okay. So if you're told it's the right triangle, then that means the hypotenuse has to be a diameter. Because of the if and only if, that means you can go backwards. So if I tell you that AC is a diameter, then you know that this triangle has to be a right triangle. Okay, now we have what's called the inscribed quadrilateral theorem, and it says a quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if its angles are supplementary. Okay, so if I have four points that are on the circle, well, let's call this D, E, F, and G. Right, and I connect those. 
In order for this to be inscribed in the circle, that means the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle F has to equal 180 degrees. And it also means the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle G is equal to 180 degrees as well. Okay. The other thing that um, I can do, or not the other thing, but since it's the if and only if statement, like the other statements, this means I can go backwards. So if I tell you that these angles are supplementary, the opposite angles are supplementary, that means you know you have a quadrilateral that's inscribed in a circle. All right, now we look at some examples. Um, for this first example, A, I notice that AB is a diameter because it goes through that center O. So that tells me that um, this angle C, the 2x, has to be a 90 degree angle. If I divide by 2, x is just 45 degrees. Okay. Now with B, I have a quadrilateral. So that means opposite angles are supplementary. So I know that y plus 120 has to equal 180. So I subtract 120. It tells me y is equal to 60. Okay. And now for z, same thing, same idea. I know that uh, z plus 80 has to equal 180. Because opposite angles have to be supplementary. If I subtract 80 from both sides, it tells me z is equal to 100 degrees.